Uh, so we are very happy uh, to, to see here Eduardo Abreu from uh, University of Campinas, state of Sao Paulo. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Like Brazil. So I will not uh, read the title. I will tell that this will be about uh, uh, hydrodynamic, Darcy hydrodynamics in porous media, miscible, immiscible, compressible, incompressible. So, Eduardo, please. We are very happy to see you here. Oh, thank you, Sergey, for your, for your kind uh, introduction. And thank you, th thank you all for your kind attention. Uh, I prepare a, a, a talk uh, in, for this seminar uh, based on our first meeting two weeks ago. So oh, I yeah, tried. But by the way, so seeing Sorry. the number of slides in the presentation, I would like to remind you that the length of the seminar is 90 minutes. <laughs> okay, okay, no, no, okay, okay, okay. I, I, <laughs> okay, no problem. I prepare. Uh, a, a long uh, slides uh, depend on the, of the question because to, to speed up and to be clear with you, but I prepare uh, actually a more or less short presentation about uh, 20, uh, 30 minutes to, to, to discuss the overall idea. And after that, we can go deeper in some specific uh, issue. So, uh, so my name is Eduardo Abreu. I'm from uh, University of Campinas in Brazil, in the state of Sao Paulo. It's a big pleasure to be here. So this is the, the, the outline of the presentation. Uh, I will discuss these two topics here uh, in the first moment, uh, uh, a motivation, why I'm interested in, in, in this kind of modeling and also two phase and three phase flows. So uh, if you have time, you can cover this last part in more details. So uh, some uh, basic facts. So my motivation here in Brazil, uh, giant carbonate reservoir. As we can see here, uh, here in Brazil, we have really uh, giant reservoirs in a very uh, particular situation in the pre-salt here. So we have this depth here, about, as you can see, 5,000 meters. So we have another post-salt, one kilometer, 1,000 meters more or less. So we have another deep layer of salt. And here is our reservoir. So the situation is highly compressible. For this reason, I'm trying to, to study uh, the gas in a supercritical state. For this reason, I, I'm approximating as incompressible flow, water, gas, and oil. So this is the, the pre-salt reservoir. Uh, we have some uh, particular difficulties. Uh, just to be short, extremely heterogeneous. Uh, we have poor spaces with many, many, many different size, complex geometries, and different kind of connections such as cars, and, and also uh, we need to, to develop such kind of reservoir in Brazil because those are our main source of reserves. So this is our uh, main motivation. So there are many new frontiers from engineering, geology, mathematics, uh, computational, whatever. It's too many uh, things uh, to do. So this is our uh, motivation. So uh, here's some details. We can turn back here to show you if you want, but uh, this is the, 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 the critical one. We have karst stratification uh, during the formation of the reservoir with very large 
uh, caves, very large fractures uh, due to the dissolution of the rocks. So we have some kind of uh, very, very, very uh, difficulty uh, to to control uh, the, the, the the reservoir uh, production. So this is the main features: fracture and cartified carbonate reservoirs. So uh, about the model, the two-phase model and three-phase model, we, we are using. Uh, the extension of classical mu muscat uh, dasi uh, for the case of three-phase flow, in which we need to consider uh, the concept of relative permeabilities. So here are some basic uh, uh, reference that is well known uh, elsewhere. So as I mentioned, uh, here we are trying to, to discuss uh, incompressible, why? Let's turn back here. In this situation, it's easy to, to take the C, uh, the gas here in this region and reinject in the bottom as a supercritical to make uh, the oil mo mobile and then easy to recover. For this particular uh, situation, I'm considering incompressible fluids. That is the, our motivation. So, so no, I did not uh, understand. Can you repeat what is easy to take and what is uh, uh, so? In this region here, yes, we have gas in a okay. supercritical compressible. We have oil and gas. It's much more easier in terms of uh, reservoir operations take the gas here in a supercritical gas cap and reinject here instead of pump some kind of oh so you are going from, to take gas yeah. from upper side and inject yes. it in the lower side yes yes good. yes yeah so in, you in, cannot in, neglect gravity good <laughs> <laughs> perfect yes yes to 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 go here is completely uh, difficult, as you said. Gravity is gravity. Uh, but so one question. Okay, uh, sorry. You say incom incompressible, yes. Uh, yes. And gas, you also consider to be incompressible. No, in this situation, we have a reservoir in a high pressure, high high mm -hmm. pressure. We have here, as you can see here. Yes. This depth. So we can mm -hmm. think in a first moment, in a, comp in a in a first modeling approach, to be incompressible. Of course, that gas is compressible, but uh, I mean mm -hmm. to do some uh, real mathematics uh, as a first approach, we can try this, and I will show you some kind of result to 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 give you some confidence about this this approach. But of course. Uh, in case of we have all the tools, we would like to consider mass transfer, miscibility, uh, compressibility, and of course, three-phase hysteresis. Nowadays, two-phase hysteresis is not too much known. We have some models, but it's not so easy to model. So this is our first, at, at least to my acknowledgement. So this is my, my first approach. Okay, so go ahead. So some notation. So we consider here uh, the porosity of the poro medium phi. Uh, S i is the saturation that is go from zero to one. Uh, uh, Mi i is the viscosity. Little k is the relative permeability. This g here is the gravity number. This capital K is the permeability of the porous media. PI is the pressure. Rho I is the density. And PHI is the capillary pressure. And as usual, capillary pressure and relative permeability depends on the physical 
properties of the reservoir uh, equation of straight algebraic one or differential, depending if you consider, for instance, uh, dynamic applied pressure. And this is highly controversial. Uh, how to 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 uh, to propose relative permeability and capillary pressure. In the case of three phase, there's a, as I will show you uh, in a couple of, of minutes, uh, the end points of the permeability relativities is crucial to give rise to elliptic region or uh, umbilical points. And then the classical theory does not apply anymore. So we have the continuity of the equation for phase I. Uh, water, gas, and oil. Uh, we have this algebraic constraint, the saturations uh, add up to one, as usual. Uh, just to call attention, to keep this in mind here, because I will use this in the case of two phase with hysteresis, and also in the case of three phase flow, uh, the relative permeability and the capillary pressure. Uh, the extension of Darcy law. And here in this work, uh, I use, this is general, water and gas and oil saturation. But in this work, I mean using Corey pop models that is largely used in uh, petroleum reservoir that for phase A, just A. For phase gas, uh, gas. And for oil, phase oil saturation. This is uh, approach. But this uh, code uh, also apply to stone that is more general. Uh, and also to uh, static uh, capillary pressure. Because if you use stone model, you have uh, elliptic region. And if you use core model, you have umbilical point. So, uh, this is uh, just to show you some kind of review that I uh, found in the past years. Uh, many, many, many uh, research on that, even from your side, the Russian one. You see, it, it's, it's quite difficult. This only in the in the West too here, and. To, to the best of my knowledge, all these work here are based on real WAG fields. We do not have uh, a general mathematical comprehension about that. So in this situation, I think this is good news for us. We can try to, to do some uh, new mathematics about that. That's the point. So this is some work that I have done in the in the recent years. Uh, as I mentioned to Ju Julia, is not to impress you, of course. It's just to show you that I'm still working on that uh, in the last 50 years. Uh, too many, uh, too many work on analytical, on uh, numerical, on modeling, and nowadays uh, I'm not convinced that we have. Uh, the best two. This is something that we need to, to work about on that. So uh, these, these we can find also in these two references here, but this is, is somewhat classical. So as you can see, many, many, many of possible uh, ways to do WAG and in this work, I'm trying to show you some combination of WAG when you inject water and gas in, 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 with cycles with simultaneous injection or women problem. We've, we found that in, in, so that in certain circumstances, uh, the injection of simultaneous injections is the same as uh, a cycle. So in this sense, we can take advantage of solve human problems. That it's more easier than WAG, in, uh, based on, on, on the mathematical uh, theory available. This is the, 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 the key point here. So this 
uh, is a schematic representation of WAG that one can find elsewhere, for instance, here and here. So uh, this is the injection well, schematically. This is the producing well. So we have the distance here. And people observe that uh, we have the WAG zone is not too much inside the reservoir here. After that point, we have mostly a two-phase due to gravity in the bottom, two-phase on the top, gas oil. We have a miscible region here. And as you can see here, unswept region. So if we would like to model this precisely, we must consider uh, compressible, uh, is a parabolic uh, system coupled to one and degenerate. There is no mathematical theory to this type of equation. So this is, is really hard. Sorry, so, sir, before, so, okay. Before you proceed to this, so I have a question uh, about those zones. Yes, because you can use VAG when uh, it's mostly oil is in the reservoir. Or it might happen, and like people around us, yes, mostly doing with another strategy, yes. So they first have uh, water flooding, and in that case, they already have a uh, how to say saturation of water inside the reservoir uh, quite big, yes. So they already made uh, mm -hmm. flooding, yes. And, uh, uh, but of course they cannot, uh, you know, take all the oil with this, yes, so. But uh, you cannot uh, ignore the fact that the water is present everywhere at the same time. Yes? Or you can, if you have different permeabilities and so on, yes, but, uh, and uh, usually they start to use uh, such EOR methods only when, um, when they kind of stop to get oil with, with water flooding. In that case, I cannot understand what will be your unswept oil region. Well, based on this uh, reference here, yeah. we, this is, I extract from this situation here. This uh, is that they observed in, in some uh, reservoirs. As you mentioned, uh, there are many, many of types of reservoir. Like in Brazil, we have uh, giant reservoirs with many layers. And in each layer, you may have more, uh, mostly oil or mostly a combination of oil and gas. And here in Brazil, we also have the situation that we have only primary uh, production. We drill and pump. In the yeah. primary. Like so this is, the, uh, my, my point here is to use this kind of schematic just to motivate that it is possible uh, to increase this WAG zone. This is my point here. This is my point, just to motivate. It is possible to do some kind of uh, more clever strategy about WAG such that we can do something like this or more like this. I mean, to swap uh, all the reservoir in a more stable strategy. That's my, the, the, my, my motivation. Uh, okay. One more question. Okay, please, so, please. Uh, this uh, is this problem uh, when you have uh, like gas going up and water going down is uh, due to gravity, yes? Yes. So yes. if, for example, for some reason we can ignore gravity because it is not important, then VAG works well, yes? So then there is no such a problem. Yes, yes, that's, I agree. But for instance, like in Brazil, okay. we, yeah, we, we have uh, uh, excellent point. Like in Brazil, we have 
uh, that reservoir in the pre-south, it is deep, but it is in Z direction large, like 500 meters. It's too large. <laughs> it is it's, it's not traditional one, like uh, 30 minutes, 50 minutes. It's 500. It's amazing. In this situation, we have many of layers, many of scenarios. We have no idea what's going on, actually. In this situation, we are trying to do some kind of uh, strategy that works quite well in its situation. For instance, as I mentioned, in some situation, uh, you use uh, static capillary pressure. But when you have a competition of gravity in this Z direction and layers in the X, Y direction, you should consider diffusion. And if you consider diffusion, transport by diffusion mechanisms, you have the capillary pressure. And maybe you consider dynamic capillary pressure. That is different for hysteresis uh, capillary pressure. So there are many situations that can happen here to explain why in some circumstances WAG is very well and others is a disaster. Mm -hmm. OK? Mm -hmm. OK. So here is the, the same picture to, that show this, this, this situation. As you can see here, the WAG, I mean, is, is more or less stable here until this situation. And we would like that this front comes more and more and more. But the point is, if you have a mix of water and gas uh, in the reservoir, you should consider high reasons too. Because in this region here, you have the wettability changing as you change the cycle of, of, of the gas and oil. So consider three-phase relative permeability and two-phase high reasons relative permeability is also important. So uh, this is my the, the first uh, result that I used to to show you this kind of comparison uh, WAG injection and human equivalent injection. So we found that the structure of the the group waves associated to this 1D model here of conservation law seem to be uh, robust under the effect of capillary diffusion. This is quite important because uh, for this situation here, we have uh, the well paused theory to help us to get uh, the, unique, the unique, un uniqueness of the solution. And based on that, we have this kind of numerical versus uh, analytical one. So here in the top, we have uh, the injection of uh, a combination of water and gas, but no WAG. So here in blue is after 10 day, uh, 100 days, sorry. And here in, in red is after uh, 1000 days. Here is the same situation for the water. So I'm injecting water and gas simultaneously with the same proportion. And here in the last column, we have oil recovery after 10, 100 days and 1,000 days. And using VAG, uh, as we can see here, uh, the amplitude of these cycles decays, such that after these same days, we have the same situation. I mean, this point here, where we have this decay, in my opinion, more or less is that point that we have now ineffective of the WAG cycle. So that's my question. Would be uh, a way to keep this uh, amplitude quite constant here in order to effectively uh, have a, a, a stable uh, reservoir 
a stable uh, recovery. And we compare this with analytical solution and numerical solution. So this is the, the cycle time, as I mentioned before, uh, alternating. Uh, this is just to show you some example. We performed here a lot of situations and we found many, many cases in which the combination of WAG is the same as human uh, problems for many, many situations. So this is uh, one thing that we are trying to, to understand. Uh, if you have some kind of uh, pardon or some kind of behavior such that if you look to this region here, when you have the water and gas and unsub to oil, this region, this sub region here is more or less the same situation here. When in which you have oil here, an injection of water plus gas here. So I am wondering if it is possible to design some kind of WAG strategy here in order to increase this region here, the length. I have no answer to that. But I think that we should consider because we have uh, a limited condition in the reservoir. Uh, I also would like to thank in real condition, we can imagine, of course, some hypothetical situation, but it's, it's quite expensive to keep pressure to keep temperature, to keep a uh, reservoir condition for optimum WAG. My question is, how does we handle WAG in a real, real, real situation? In which we, we, we should consider the possibility of inject water and gas with a limited number of, of uh, situations. That is my, my concern here. So I think, uh, one possibility is to design some kind of uh, new uh, WAG strategy to increase this uh, swap uh, area here in an unstable, in to avoid unstable situation based also in the heterogeneity because if you have an injection of water and gas, you have also the influence of the heterogeneity. So the interplay between non-linearity, the mobility ratio and the heterogeneity also may control the fingering effect. So as I mentioned before, uh, we, we should consider hysteresis. Uh, here, I'd like to mention this work here. And in this work, as we can find, a lot of in the literature, they consider these two main assumptions. The inhibition process is reversible. This is not true because we, we, we should assume equilibrium and we do not have equilibrium at all. And also uh, the scanning curves, the situation of reversible situation in extreme uh, values. We consider uh, hysteresis with a different approach. Uh, using relaxation that I will explain now. So first, uh, there are some kind of laboratory experiment like here, this one reference that is able to, to measure the relaxation in a microscopic scale so this is possible to occur in a reservoir, in a real reservoir. This is a result quite recently. And in, uh, and yes. And this is real, just to, to, to make it clear what I'm doing here. So this is the real situation from those reference here, and Blanche. 
that is well known. So this is real. We have zero here, one here, his water saturation. Here we have the relative permeability. So we have the imbibition process. The water is increasing and the decreasing of the oil here by these curves. And we have points, as you can see here. This is the starting point for uh, some controversy here. This is very delicate that has impact in two phase and mostly in three phase. And the key issue here is the endpoints. I will show you why. So, but, but first, uh, he is our model. So we are respecting the, 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 the expected uh, behavior. And I would like uh, to mention this seminal work here from Professor Marquezine. See, in 2001, that he introduced the first model with this Russian colleague here, uh, modeling with relaxation, but in the, in the, but in the relative permeability with linear diffusion. This is important. And, and this model allows uh, the situation out of equilibrium. I'll try to explain in details right now. So here we have the, the, the water, curve, here we have the oil, for instance, in an imbibition process, in here in a drainage process, like in a cycle. And here we have the same situation. We have the imbibition of the oil, we have the drainage of the oil, and in between two states, we have the scanning curves. So for each scanning curve, we have limits. The limits of that previous model. In this new modeling here, allows to go apart from the, this region. And then if you go out of, of equilibrium, we can go to this scanning curve here or this one. So the irreversible process is now possible to model as is expected from the experimental results. This is the new uh, advanced in this work here, this yeah. idea. But how do we obtain this uh, scanning curves? So how do we, do we define these lines? In this case here, we consider, uh, for instance, straight lines as a first approach. Mm -hmm. What is important here is to construct possible curves, actually not precisely a straight line. If you look at zoom here, you can see that it's not, it's not linear, it's close linear. But what is important here is if you have linear or quadratic one, it works. The point here is that you have uh, the relative permeability for oil and uh, drainage and division, and you should be able to model this uh, transition. OK? So the arbitrary for the moment, right? The library data is just two curves, and the transitions, uh, the scanning curves, we just define uh, as we want, right? Or... No, 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 no. For instance, if you have uh, lab uh, data, you can use it. For instance, as in my case here, we use uh, almost linear because for some data that we have from the literature, we uh, model it by this way. But if you have real good one lab that is quadratic or cubic or exponential, you can do to model this. This is free. Actually, your question is very important here and I'd like to, to, be, to make me clear. This is a ingredient free. If you have real data, you can do it here. This is the good news. I use here to, to do the analysis and the results, but if you have a more complicated one, 
based on real data, you can plug it here. So it's now, better now. The, the most important question here is, of course, uh, uh, the following. So uh, surely, yes, you will never be able to know those curves. Yes. Very precise. Never. Yes. Never. It's never. Very, even if you have a good lab. Yes. Uh, the problem, I think it, it's in the future slides, yes, but still I will ask now. So the, uh, can we determine, can we understand how much uh, the knowledge about these curves is important? So does the final result really changes with change of those curves? Yes, or I yes. mean plus minus epsilon, yes? Yes, yes. So it's clear that the left bound curve is important, the right bound curve is important. Yes, but does this really intermediate curves play a role? So if you would have it in future, please pay our attention to, to this and we will. Yes, that, that, is, that is trying to, to, to figure out nowadays because as you say quite well, uh, these are secrets like in Brazil, it's quite difficult to have real lab. So we need to work with the joint with the companies to have some blind <laughs> data to, 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 to combine with the results. This is quite new. As you can see here, uh, we extend this work for in this work here and we solve all Riemann problems and, and, and we introduce also high stresses in the diffusion. So this is quite a recent result here, but I can show you some 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 uh, mathematical results right now. So this is the hypothesis. So no uh, hysteresis in the water permeability. Uh, we introduce uh, as in the literature uh, in the oil permeability, and those scanning curves in red and blue, as mentioned before. Here we have uh, the, the situation for uh, this is the high risk parameter and here is the, the, the saturation here from the mathematical viewpoint. This here is our equilibrium region. And then this modeling allows us to go out of the equilibrium and then allows to change the scanning curves. This would be expected if you change uh, the relative permeability. This is the, the key issue in this modeling here. So uh, this modeling also allow us to introduce hysteresis in the diffuse effects, because as you know, there are many of works that introduce uh, high stresses in the relative permeabilities and the capillary pressure. But there are no laboratory experiments. So this modeling allows us to introduce high stresses in the relative permeability, but as the relative permeability and mobility also appears in the diffuse reflux, in the coefficient of diffusion, they will affect. So we can uh, construct uh, a more general model that accounts uh, directly high stresses in the relative permeabilities and also in the uh, diffusion. So this is the idea. Uh, we have some kind of human problem. We, we have an injection actually, because in the, in the lab you have the injection of certain quantity so this is uh, the idea. And then we now have a human grossa problem with relaxation. So by using this theory, we can give, we hope to give a more accurate response to that question that Sergei uh, mentioned before. We are ready to compare laboratory real data with uh, really uh, mathematical well-posed problem. That's the, the, the situation here. And then, as I mentioned before, uh, this from this analytical numerical approach were quite uh, recent. And we have some simulation in 2D2. If 
uh, we have, if you give me the real data, then I can model the scanning curves that reflects the real reservoir, and then I can use this theory to, to give you an answer. If certain condition, we have a change or not in the, in the, in the, in the producing curves. So, uh, turn back here, just to, to show some numerical simulations to discuss, to motivate. Let me show some uh, numerical simulation in 2D. Uh, is a random field, but correlated. This is quite important. It's not an independent one. It's a correlated one. This is hysteresis. At this moment, I would like to mention that this model is also good for simulation. There are some complications here. For instance, it's not a good idea to use the global pressure formulation because uh, the global pressure formulation does not uh, work in general for hysteresis in the capillary pressure or in the relative permeability. Uh, so here, question, what is here? What is on the graph? Yes. Yes, here in the simulation, I'm injecting uh, water here on the on the on this boundary, and this is the the water invading the reservoir in a synthetic correlated uh, Gaussian field. So and then we can. So the, this is the graph of water saturation. Yes, the invading. Yes. And, and here is the oil recovery. But why is it that water is uh, lower where you're injecting? So the saturation of water is smaller at the injection side that uh, further in the reservoir. Why is that? Sorry, could you repeat, please? Uh, the, satura the water saturation at the injection site is smaller than uh, later in the reservoir. Right. Yes. Right. So if you show the previous graph. Yes. So the water saturation here is smaller than in this region. Right? Yes. 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 It's this very is very unusual. Right? Yes. But the, we have here a stationary shock wave here. This is appears in the model. This is, I agree with you, this is not unexpected, but it happens. You have a threshold value here due to the hysteresis. So if you, I can show here the equations to, to explain you precisely this. So this is because here. of hysteresis. So without yes. this, you will not have this. Okay, then yes, that, yes. let's see how it happens. Yes. Yes. Uh, for instance, here we have a system, one equation for water and another equation for the hysteresis. Actually, we have a two by two system of conservation law. But as you can see here, there is no variation. For this reason, we have, uh, we must have a stationary wave to connect the solutions. This is supported by the analytical construction. So our numerical simulation in 2D agree precisely with our rigorous analytical solution in 1D. Okay? Okay, thank you. Okay. This is, is quite strange, I agree, but it's, it happens. So in the case of three phase, this is, is quite interesting here. This is a controversial. This is a simulation of, uh, we have a three phase simulation in 2D, uh, the injection of water here. This simulation is only to show the existence of the so-called transitional wave that does not respect the lax theory the, the transitional waves is this intermediate wave here. 
and it survived in a heterogeneous medium. It is stable. Professor Marquezin discovered such transitional wave in 1D and asked me to, to, to give this answer. It's possible to have transitional waves uh, because the transitional waves is heavily dependent on the parabolic term. And the excitation of the heterogeneity in the parabolic terms does not restore, does not destroy the transitional wave. So, but uh, then it, uh, so this is also because of hysteresis, correct? No, no, no hysteresis, no, no, that's the point. No, in the, no, no, yes, in, in, in the three phase model here, not hysteresis, but that model can be uh, extended to the three phase. The question is, in two phase, it's, it's really difficult to find uh, relative permeability. In three phase, is even difficult. I will show you some slides to 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 motivate this controversial. Excuse me, but do you know if anybody actually observed these transitional waves in uh, real world data? So it should be observable, right? Well, uh, nobody knows. I'll try to to give you some response about this in a couple of minutes, if you if you uh, allow me. I will show this controversial. Excellent question. This is a long history between Ruben Juanes and Pat Zeck from Stanford and Professor Dan Marquezin in the last two decades, because Ruben Juanes and Pat Zeck developed a theory to claim that does not exist transitional waves. Why? Because you need uh, to provide relative permeability with certain uh, behavior. Let me show you this right now. I can skip this for a moment because this is, is quite uh, crucial. Thank you for your question. So, again, three phase. We have this kind of uh, points here in the, in, the, in the drainage. And here we have the, the oil. We have points. Question, how do we approximate this end point here? How do we approximate this end point here? Just to give you an example, this is the gas. For a moment, forget this end point and forget this end point. Just for a moment, okay? And let's see what happens here. Uh, Ruben Juanes uh, developed a theory based on uh, stone model. He proved that if you uh, do some kind of modeling, you can have uh, a strictly system of hyperbolic in loss. So we have no transitional waves. On the other hand, then observed that, that in stone model, we have elliptic region. And in case of core model, we have umbilical point. And then in the reservoirs, uh, largely used in petroleum engineering, should observe transitional waves. In my opinion, both are right. Because you see, here in the case of core model, uh, in this case here, zero, zero slope core. And here is the model. This is my analysis to the case of Corey. If this guy here is such that respect this inequality, we have a relative permeability that does not have a transitional wave to the case of Corey. We can skip this for a moment. here. So just a second.
Yes. So again, we have this situation. On the left, we have zero sl slope, and on the right, we have this kind. The situation is positive here, if you respect this. In this case, we have zero. So this the situation is impossible, in my opinion, if it is zero or not. But look, if you have uh, on the left, the traditional one, uh, sorry, this new one here, you have as expected from the theory, a refraction and a shock, constant state and a refraction and a constant state, classical theory lacks. But if on the right, you consider uh, zero as traditional one, you have a refraction and a small shock here, constant state, the transitional is here, constant state and the classical Berkeley leverett uh, solution. So if people from engineering tell me use stone model, the mathematics say to me that we should expect transitional waves. It's clear. Hello? Yes, yes, it's clear. Okay. So uh, I, 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 we do not have uh, at the moment a uh, definite response to that fact. But if you use Corey model that is largely used in the engineering, if you use a stone model that is also largely used in engineering, we should expect mathematically, the mathematics tell us you should expect transitional waves. If you remove such artifacts, you do not have uh, transitional waves. But the question is, we change the reservoir? No, it's not possible to change the reservoir. Of course, we can model. If we turn back here, of course, this is a, uh, I mean, uh, adjustment of experimental one. I have no idea if this is uh, slope zero or not. So we should develop uh, a general mathematical theory to account both situations. That is my point here. For this reason, we should uh, consider a more general model. It, this without hysteresis. If you consider hysteresis, the situation is, is even complicated. That I will show you right now. I'm sorry, one more question. And do okay, you okay, understand please. how exactly does this transitional wave depend on parabolic terms? So it depends very much on the capillary pressure, right? But uh, do we know how or we just know that it exists? Yes, uh, the, the, the answer is, 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 is partially uh, known. Professor Marquezine proved that if you have a parabolic uh, term that is positive, the answer is yes, transitional wave survives. And I give in this paper here, I gave, uh, which one? I think this. No. Just a moment. Here, in this paper here, I I show for the first time transitional waves in the literature, in the heterogeneous medium, with the parabolic term induced by heterogeneity, this continuous one. And if you simulate without without the parabolic term, you also have uh, the transitional one. So that's the key issue. The transitional wave does depend on the diffusion in terms of selection of the uniqueness, but it is also very stable in terms of ODE theory, for instance. I, I make it my, my, myself clear? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. 
So this is uh, transitional waves appears. I mean, it's possible to appear. We do not know how to, to, to make a, a good use for such a structure. But as I mentioned before, in the case of three phase, we have situations in which when you inject uh, a, a combination, a specific combination of water and gas is equivalent, you alternate water and gas. And just to, to motivate a little bit uh, the formulation, we do not use uh, the phase formulation. Let me show you some uh, situation here that is, is quite important too. So here we have some uh, results uh, about your last question about the solvability or independence of the model on the three phase capillary pressure. This is Hermano Fried from IMPA. This is a Russian guy, if I'm not wrong. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, this is some consideration to the heterogeneous media, uh, anomalous diffusion. Here, uh, just to, to, to conclude this part of the talk, uh, if you have a two phase classical one without high stresses, you should use uh, the global pressure. But as the global pressure depends on the capillary pressure and the mobilities, and the mobility of phase I depends on the relative permeability and the viscosity of phase I. If the relative permeability does depend on the high reason, this is not valid anymore in general. For this reason, you should consider uh, uh, the phase formulation. This is discussed uh, in details in this paper here, Chen and Ewing. If such total differential condition holds, then uh, you should have a global passion. Otherwise, you should use the so-called phase formulation. Here we have some uh, possible uh, three-phase relative permeability, but it's, it's quite restrictive. If you have the reservoir that match to such condition, okay. But in general, we do not know what kind of reservoir. And most important, you may have dynamic relative permeability, high stresses, and dynamic capillary pressure. And then you should consider, uh, I mean, uh, more uh, fundamental, more uh, robust uh, modeling. So this is a way that we solve the equation, but uh, that, so some considerations. No, but uh, if you oh, can just fractional flow model uh, as it is, yes, you call, we call it fractional flow, you call it, I forgot uh, that, uh, so when you cannot go to capillarity pressure, how you call this system? Sorry. So uh, when you cannot go to capillarity pressure, how, how you call this system? Which one? Let me go back here. Sorry. Now that, that doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. So that's, so if you cannot go to capillarity pressure, yes, then you have uh, the, the system only consistent of say Darcy laws and the differences of pressures. And in our experience, it's dramatically, dramatically more difficult to have uh, to construct a numerical scheme for it. Yeah, no, no, I agree. I did this. This, this, uh, that I'm, this is the key issue here. My model is not based on the on, on on the global pressure. My model is based on the phase formulation. You see. Yes, yes, okay. Phase formulation. This is what I want yes. to hear. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. We my use another term for this. Yes, then. <laughs> Sorry. My model is based on the phase formulation to account general relations 
to the capillary pressure and general relation to the relative mobility. I agree with you. We need uh, more general uh, formulation. That is why I'm trying to, to show you. You have this continuous uh, fractional flow function that is, is quite complicated too. I'm trying to, to show you some uh, issues here. Just a second. Uh, oh, this is our uh, heterogeneous media that's correlated. The, also the, the, the porosity. No, I think it's the, in the beginning. Sorry, just a second. Here, I used this kind of uh, capillary pressure with this kind of behavior, right? This is what we expected. So this is, is quite close to the reality. And we also consider uh, relative permeability of stone type or quarry type. For this reason, that we should use a more general approach. And uh, to that question before about the stability or instability of the transitional waves, let me show you my last uh, re numerical results and then open for discussion, more discussion. Oh, so this is the, the model for the heterogeneity in which we have uh, anomalous diffusion. This is a model proposed by Glyn Sharp. And we have, uh, as you can see here, uh, it's not uh, independent. We have long scale correlation. This means viscous fingering to account viscous fingering and anomalous diffusion. The same situation to the porosity. This uh, the situation, this uh, slab uh, uh, simulation. So no flow here, no flow here. Injection of oil and gas here. We keep oil pressure here to minimize. Uh, we put oil pressure equals zero. It means put the, the frontier to the to the bound in the infinity to avoid, to minimize the viscous finger effect in the good way, I mean. This is a simple realization Actually, of the heterogeneous, sorry. So okay. you fix oil pressure, but not water pressure or gas pressure. Is there some physical meaning to this or is just a convenience? No. Uh, I mean, uh, it's possible to put, you need to define a pressure, right? Uh, in this case here, you should consider oil pressure or gas pressure, one, one phase and keep it fixed. In, in, in my simulation here, uh, for convenience in, to, to show the results, uh, I, I, I keep the oil pressure here. Because uh, if you are producing oil, this is the idea, if you are producing oil, uh, in general, you control the pressure of the producing wells. This is the, you do not expect uh, to, 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 to keep water and gas in the producing wells, because if you put in oil or gas pressure, you have breakthrough. So this is not a good idea. For this region, in, in my understanding, you should put some kind of boundary condition on the oil pressure. Make sense? Yes. No, the, the reason okay. is that uh, because we studied a lot what type of different boundary conditions can be put there. And actually there is a huge list of them. Yes. yes. So we were wondering why you choose the, exactly this one. Yes, so the, this was the reason of the, the true reason of a question, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, the, the model, the computational model is quite flexible. There is no reason to ignore uh, water, 
water or gas pressure. It's possible. But for this uh, explanation before, we used uh, oil pressure. But it's not a limitation, hopefully. So we have this kind of uh, discrepancy in the maximum and the minimum uh, relative, uh, permeability. It is quite uh, high construct. So this is the, the uh, experiment that we compare. Uh, here we have uh, the transitional waves here, but it, it's, it's quite difficult to see, but it's up here, here. And to, to and, and here, because you see the, the, the viscous fingering because we have a correlated uh, run, uh, field to, 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 to give rise uh, to the viscous fingering. To better see this, I did. This is a weak uh, heterogeneity. This is the homogeneous one. And this uh, uh, heterogeneous one, you see for different, uh, let me show here. I, I did many for in this position, 1D longitudinal one in this direction, and then a lateral projection. And here we have the transitional survive. If uh, we increase the heterogeneity, we can see that the behavior of the transitional wave also survive. So the heterogeneity uh, that appear in the capillary pressure uh, does not uh, destroy the transitional wave uh, structure. And is it the same? So the transitional wave is from 0 0.71 to 0 0.4. So the saturation levels are the same for different heterogeneities? Yes. Yes. Mm, back. And you see, I'm back and forth. Just yes, to see I see. This. So it's interesting that they survive. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, uh, this is for weak. I can go here, CV, like 2.0. It's quite, uh, I mean, uh, contract. It it's appear this this kind of uh, structure here. So the transitional wave from uh, the, the mathematical viewpoint exist and from the i mean reservoir condition if you do use uh core model also appear and it's it, it survives here is the same situation in the case of the gas you see here the oops sorry I, it's back to to turn the color here. I have you no. Know. Well, okay. And if you you see the same situation, here's the transitional wave here. It appears here. And if you again, is the transitional. You see, as you mentioned before, the amplitude of the transitional wave survives. We do not have uh, analytical uh, results, rigorous one for heterogeneous only simulation because it's, it's quite difficult. There is no uh, theory available. Uh, well, to, to conclude, we also did this kind of, of uh, experiments in, with high stresses. Just to show you the same, uh, as I mentioned, the same, uh, I mean, more or less real uh, capillary pressure. Uh, we, it's possible to, 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 to see uh, classical Olenic construction for, e it, it, it's easy for engineering to use, but we, we, we also did this is the water. You see, 
the, 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 this is the stationary wave that you asked me in the beginning. And it's here. And again, the structure does uh, seem to be stable under excitation of the heterogeneity. This is without gravity, and he is gravity. You see? Also here. And, and, and here is the analytical uh, solution. So what we have here is uh, a general modeling for the two phase and three phase. It's possible to account hysteresis uh, in the two phase flow by using relaxation to be more uh, close to the reality. And the, the question are how do we measure real lab to compare with our analytical solutions. That is another issue here, how to get real data. So uh, I, I have many, many things to, to, to discuss, but I think uh, I can stop here and maybe open to discussion if you, if you, if you want. So thank you very much. Let's thank the speaker. Yes, and uh, our questions. <laughs> I'm trying to, to show to, to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I think okay. I, I, I stop to share now or, or, or no, no, keep no, no, here. No, please keep share. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, then, uh, okay, if nobody asks, then, then I ask, uh, yes. So I announced the question in the very, very beginning of the talk. Yes. Okay. So uh, that, uh, so because we see that still your numerics is very well in agreement with uh, uh, analytical solution. Yes. Uh, so my question is how much it depends on those... Uh, uh, transitional curves inside hysteresis. Oh, just just a second. You are saying here? Yes. How uh, does uh, do do these scanning curves uh, uh, influence on uh, the final result? Well, in this uh, in this paper here we do not perform a study to evaluate uh, the impact of the hash reasons. Why? We do not have real data. No, but uh, so uh, th this is, uh, you know, chicken egg problem. Yes. So if we don't do any studies before we get the data from, uh, uh, from real, from oil company, if you don't mm -hmm. demonstrate to oil company that the data is really important, that mm -hmm. depending on what it is, they will never do a true expensive experiment. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if yes. you show that, look, if scanning curves looks like this, then, you know, you extract that amount of oil. Yes. But if like that, then you get this amount of oil and it's really, how to say, different. Yes. Then uh, this is uh, what is all because uh, we, we actually asked a, a, a company, yes, is it possible? Mm -hmm. to get and they asked, okay, what exactly experiments do, do we need to do? And we explained which experiments we need them to do. And they told them, <laughs> forget mm -hmm. the answer to us. <laughs> we will never use this, uh, do this. And especially because the, they have, uh, like, as I understand, uh, might be Alexander can better say, yeah, that uh, because they have finite number of cores, cores, mm -hmm. yes? uh, and so the, in order to get this experiment, they have to kind of uh, use this core for, for experiment and not for other experiments. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the well, for, 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 so we can do. You still can as a mathematical model. What stops you kind of from from working uh, on this kind of 
canyon curve. Okay, let me try to show something here to see if I can give you Okay, here we have uh, the situation without high stresses, right? This is classical, the, yes. the convex hull construction. On the left, we have no gravity. On the right, we have gravity, right? Yes. So if we see the, the amplitude of the, of the shocks is the behavior of we have a high affection and a shock wave. And with gravity, a high affection and a shock wave. So with high stresses, right? We have uh, this stationary wave, a high affection uh, here, and we have uh, a shock. This to me seems to be more uh, stable because it's higher. And if you look to the, the case of gravity, you have like a piston. So uh, based on these very, very preliminary results, it seems to me that if you plug high stresses, expect to have a more real modeling and a more uh, higher uh, front. In this situation, uh, should be confirmed with the experimental data. But I think we, if you look uh, with high stresses, without high stresses, this is the, the high. And he is with uh, high stresses, is, is a little high, right? If you have a, a higher amplitude, I think you should expect a more stable situation. So the answer to your question, in my understanding, is that it is, has to be is positive. It means a more stable situation, and then you can control better your oil production based on these analytical solutions. Make sense? Yes, this makes sense, but uh, okay, no, not all part of my question. <laughs> yes, okay. So more questions? What? Maybe more questions appears. Oh, there, then I have even more questions. Okay, we, we can uh, after your next question. Please, yeah. we can turn back to the first question and let me try mm -hmm. to understand. Maybe I, I didn't understand quite well your Yeah, but we will question. have time after the seminar. So let's okay. try to discuss this. Okay, after. okay, please go ahead. I will probably plot you what exactly I meant, yes. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, so uh, the another thing is that, can you show this, uh, 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 the relaxation scheme, how you model hysteresis? Okay. Uh, no, no. So while yeah. you are showing, so I will ask an e easy question. So there usually you have a parameter which tells you how fast you, you do your relaxation. Yes. Yes, and the, yes. In the way Here. how I see this, yes, this tau, I think, yes? Yes, tau. yes, yes. And uh, the way how I see the story is that usually the change of uh, inside hysteresis actually happens much faster than uh, actual the, the movement inside the field, inside the oil field. So you have yes. a field system. Uh, what you do for numerical simulation in that case, because you cannot do a fixed time step, you have to have different type stamps for, for hysteresis relaxation and for, um, for, for, uh, for fluid dynamics. And, mm -hmm. So do, do you do this as a different time step? How, how you do this? Yes, uh, thank you. So in this case here, we, we, we select several options to tell. Because mm -hmm. these, the, as you mentioned, uh, tau 
depends on the characteristics of the reservoir, right? So we, we vary in orders of magnitude, for instance, like 10 a minus 3, 10 a minus 2, 10 a minus 1, 10 a 2, and it is quite insensitive here. And to solve the, 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 the full equation, we use a, a so-called operating splitting. Then we solve the transport equation, subject to a dynamic CFL. Next, we solve the, the global pressure. The full algorithm is here. I think it's... Yeah, here. yeah, you had this full... So, here, yes. I think mm -hmm. it is better to explain. So in the very beginning, just to, to this simulation, we choose uh, the minimum CFL time step. Then we solve the oil pressure first, then solve global hysterism to account uh, the hyperbolic part and uh, the parabolic one. Then in the same time and step. I see you, you use semi-analytical solutions, so you Kind yes, of, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. numerics, but you write a lot of formula there. Okay. Yes, 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 okay. yes, yes. But then there is no question, yes, from my side. Yes, so that, that you answer. Yes, so you choose the expression for hysteresis yes. so that you can actually resolve it analytically. Yes, yes, yes. And the first question about the curves is not depends on a particular type of, uh, of the scanning curve. It's be more general, we can solve it too. Semi-analytically, so it's it's quite robust. Yes, I see, I see, I see. Then, uh, colleagues, uh, more questions? Can you explain what's once again? What do you mean by relaxation in this term? Oh, what does it mean? Okay, let me show here. I think the best way to show you is is here. Oops. In, in classical situations, in the classical modeling, people use, oops. Wow, what is, I like to, okay. Mm Well, I need you to, <laughs> sorry. Okay, okay, I can, I, I can explain here. So in, in classical situation, uh, you consider equilibrium. This is classical as it's, it, 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 it's done here. They assume uh, the, the process is reversible and the scanning curves respect some kind of extreme values. If you have a WAG process, you change the, 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 the relative permeability, right? So in terms of modeling, uh, it's not possible to expect these extreme values here because you can have uh, inhibition by this curve until this point here. Then go to a scanning curve here and then go to the inhibition. But relaxation allows us to go away to the equilibrium locally and better account the redistribution of the saturation in a time scale that is smaller than the, the, the hydrodynamic swap. And then you can change a little above here or a little below. In this sense, relaxation allows us to, to, to better model uh, uh, this kind of play type behavior, the switch inhibition and drainage process. It, it's, it's better now? Okay, yeah, it's better. Mm -hmm. This is the, the, the key issue here. We should expect 
not equilibrium. Relaxation allows us to go out of the equilibrium. But relaxation is some term, I mean, just about hysteresis, yes? Uh, uh, no, no, relaxation is more general. You, you, you may have relaxation in a general system. When you have but you use it, you use it for, for hysteresis here. Yes, yes. Here is used for, for hysteresis. No, no, no. This is one of the approaches for, for hysteresis. Yes, yes, yes. This, this, this kind of things and okay. uh, yeah, so this is but uh, another thing, did you try to use something like Presach model for, for it? Sorry, could you repeat please? Did you try to use something like Presach model for hysteresis? Do you know what is Presach model for hysteresis? No, 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 no. I do, I really do not understand you. Uh, yes, so the, the, so so you used approach with relaxation as with relaxation, right? Session approach, and there is another approach which allows you to get a pictures not exactly as you draw but uh, quite similar. Mm -hmm. It's called Presach, and in that case, uh, how to say it's assumed that your space or whatever your core where you measure your relative permeabilities so that it's represented uh, uh, in uh, infinite like in a, in a huge number of pieces mm -hmm. yes where you each of them is either uh, kind of moving uh, like easy moving or I don't know heavy moving yes so, so we have small permeability there or high permeability there and after this the total permeability is an integral uh, over those pieces oh but you have some kind of equilibrium assumption to solve the the local human problems more or less so i uh, like to be fair i cannot really understand what you mean on the equilibrium assumption uh you do not allow uh this uh fast variation in the in the core to account the the redistribution of the of the of the fluids because oh. hysteresis is uh, somehow measure uh the redistribution of the saturation in the pore right yes so in in in, in this model that you are uh, explaining me and i thank you to share this with me, you account this kind of a fast variation or, or more an equilibrium to construct no, I the, the... That I like I, I decompose my space in a very small pieces mm -hmm. and in very small in each very small piece the change is uh, infinitely fast. Oh I see. But because there are so many of them, Yes, the, then you will actually always have smooth, uh, smooth transitions as well. Oh yes, 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 yes. You have some kind of okay smooth transition. Yes, so yes. This is what, I but, see. but because this is too, too many of them. Yes, and this is another approach. Actually, mm -hmm. yes. I, I don't know if you send me some kind of. Yes, uh, I, I thank you very much. But it, it's easy to prove in a, in, a, in a simulator this kind of approach? No, that's uh, so, so it has advantages and disadvantages. From one oh, point I see. View, you don't need uh, to do to solve this uh, multi scale uh, problem, uh, which mm -hmm. I which you nicely resolved because you had analytic solution. Yes, from one point of view, but from another point of view, actually. Uh, at each uh, special point, you will need to introduce certain measure and uh, to see how this measure changes. I yes. see. So, so, so numeric. I, I think computationally, in the end, it's the same. Yes, because but I, if you like, you use this analytical approach when you can solve it analytically, and so you don't do numerics actually in, in your hysteresis. Yes, but if you don't do this and you still do numerical simulation of the corresponding OD, yes, then I think computational time is uh, the same, but uh, but the, how to say, the code is more difficult for, for price. Yes, I would like to mention, because we do semi-analytic, uh, this is something that I'd like to, to make clear. Just a second. No. Yes, here. Yes, the 
the same analytical is only possible because we do this kind of splitting here. And uh, we compare our full sol numerical solution with the analytical solution, and we see that we have agreement. So our sem semi analytical solution of the hysteresis is only possible due to this kind of splitting. So this combination of uh, semi analytical with numerical that allows this over uh, process. <laughs> okay, yeah. Colleagues, uh, more questions? Oh. Okay, so let's then thank the speaker again. Oh, thank you. Yes, we will think that the seminar has finished, but we can stay for a while for, for continue of discussion, those.